For over a decade now, if you've wanted the best media streamer you can get, you've had a lot of brands to choose from. You could have gone with a Roku Ultra, you could have gone with an Nvidia Shield, or you could have even gone with an Apple TV 4K. One brand you probably wouldn't have gone with though is Google, but that is changing right now. For the first time, Google's new TV streamer is not designed to be a tiny dongle that lives at the back of your TV. Instead, Google is designing this as a set-top box, something that lives outside of the back of your TV right on top of your media console. To help with this, Google made it so that it is very aesthetically pleasing and something that can blend in with pretty much any home's decor. If you want options though, it does come in two colors, porcelain, which is this off-white one, and then hazel, which I think looks really really nice. Unfortunately, the Hazel model is only going to be available directly from the Google Store. So if you don't want to shop at the Google Store, you're going to be stuck with the porcelain model. Along with the redesign of the media streamer itself, Google has also fully redesigned the remote. The remote now has a taller shape to it. It has more buttons than before. The volume buttons have moved from the side of the controller to the top, which is a move that I really appreciate. And there's a new customizable button that can launch your favorite streaming app, switch the inputs on your TV, TV, or even launch the Google Home app. I know what you're thinking, the Google Home app? What are you talking about? But don't worry, I'm gonna get to that in a second. On the back of the device itself, there's also a USB-C port that's specifically just for power. You have an ethernet port, which is a nice touch Google. Thank you so much for including that. And this button right here will allow you to find your remote. If you tap the button, it makes your remote emit a chirping sound, which will help you find it if it happens to get lost in any of your couch cushions. There's also a more powerful processor, more RAM than ever before, and 32 gigabytes of storage, which is four times as much storage as the previous Chromecast with Google TV models have. Rounding all this together, you have a very powerful new system, one that Google claims is 22% more powerful than any streamer it's actually released in the past. So that's all the hardware, but let's talk about what the streamer can actually do. As one would expect, it comes with all the high-end audio and video features that you would want from a high-end streamer, which includes 4K, HDR, Dolby Atmos support, and Dolby Vision support. It'll also do pretty much everything that every other Google streamer has done, including Chromecast. So even though it doesn't have Chromecast in the name, you can still cast stuff from your phone or tablet or laptop directly to your TV through this media streamer. It can also support spatial audio on content that actually has this feature. You can connect your Pixel Buds to the Google TV streamer and then consume that content with spatial audio. Of course, there are going to be some new Pixel Buds coming very soon, so we wouldn't be surprised if those new Pixel Buds have that as a star feature. Remember that this is Android TV built into this streamer. Google TV is a skin that lives on top of Android TV. With Android TV on board, you're gonna have access to the Play Store and all sorts of different apps, and especially games that the Play Store offers. You can connect a wireless controller to this streamer and then play those Android games on your TV, making this streamer a pretty nifty little gaming console. Of course, this is 2024 and this is a Google product, so it is going to have Gemini features baked in. There are two cool features here based on Gemini. The first is Gemini overviews. So what Gemini is going to do is it's going to use its generative AI powers to create little snippets of text for content. For example, it could give you a summary of what that content is, but that summary could be more catered to you specifically. Also, it's going to aggregate reviews for that content from people like you and then give you an idea of what you can expect. This is going to make things a little bit easier when you want to find content. The second thing Gemini is going to be able to do is this new ambient mode. So ambient mode is essentially a screensaver. When you're not watching something actively, it's going to put something on your TV's display to make it more interesting and for people with OLED TVs, prevent burn-in. You can do this with stock screensaver stuff that's going to come with the streamer, or you can connect your Google Photos account to make it a big photo display. But Gemini is also going to allow you to create AI-generated imagery. So you could have something really unique on your TV that Google says could make your TV 
a work of art, or it could just look really cool. So those are all the features that come with this, but I wanna talk about smart home. So remember how I told you that Google doesn't want you to keep this thing behind your TV. It wants it to be outside right on your TV console. One of the big reasons for this is because it has thread and matter baked into it. That means that this can now act as a smart home hub. If you don't have a smart home set up yet, this is now the best time to do that because this will act as the center for your new smart home. As an example of what I mean, matter and thread baked into this device means that if you buy a light bulb with matter and thread support, if that light bulb requires a separate hub, you don't need to buy that separate hub. The Google TV streamer will now act as that hub. This could allow you to connect it to pretty much anything in your home that has that support. In addition to supporting your individual smart home devices, it's also going to support the Google Home app. This is going to bring the Google Home experience to your television, making your TV probably the biggest smart display in your home. With the push of a button, you could launch the Google Home app and then turn on the light turn off the lights, start an automation, check out what's going on on your Nest cams, or even see notifications when someone rings your smart doorbell. You'll get an image of the doorbell's video stream right on your TV. This is a really cool new feature of the Google TV streamer that's going to set it apart from pretty much every other streamer on the market. It's not only going to be the place where you go when you want to consume entertainment, but it's also going to be the place you can go when you want to interact with your smart home, and it's also going to prevent you from getting up off the couch if you don't need to. So given that this is the first real TV streamer from Google, it shouldn't be surprising to know that this is also going to be the most expensive streamer that Google has ever released. At $99, this now is much, much more expensive than anything else we've seen from Google in this category. There is a silver lining here though, which is that even though it's $99, that makes it the same price as the Roku Ultra. It also makes it far less expensive than the Nvidia Shield, and it also also makes it way less expensive than the Apple TV 4K. So just because it's the most expensive one that we've seen from Google doesn't mean that it's not competitive. I, for one, am super excited about this new TV streamer because I've always loved the Google TV interface. I love that you can use it to find all the content that you want in one spot. You don't need to take out your phone and try and figure out, oh, is this on Netflix? Oh, is this on Amazon? No, you just type it into the Google TV interface and it tells you exactly where you can find that. I've always loved that but I've never liked the hardware that Google's released. The hardware has always been underpowered when compared to the competition. And I do a lot of 4K streaming from my Plex server, and I just want something that's more powerful and is gonna last a longer time. So. This is finally Google stepping into the market as a leader in this space. I can only hope that what Google is promising here is going to live up to those expectations. But I wanna know what you think. Do you think this is the right move from Google? Should it have gone more expensive or should it have gone less expensive? Let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, I will see you guys in the next one.